Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas and I have an update on the alternator made out of a fan motor. This is an induction motor. The link to that video is here. This video, what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to make a very simple wooden hexagon. This, These stators, there's six of them on there. So you need a hexagon rotor in order to activate these. These are uh, uh, wound one direction clockwise, counterclockwise. So you can do a north-south configuration on the magnets and have a single phase alternator. In a previous video I showed you the wooden one that I did which looks something like this. It wasn't perfect. This was a circle and I cut six sides. There's a lot easier way of doing this where you can get more uh, accurate like this. I also have been able to get steel ones made. There's information on our website about all of this stuff, but these we'll be doing in a future video. For now, if you want to make one out of wood to get a rotor that looks something like this, it works pretty good. This is actually just glued on there and I've done a lot of tests and it holds up really well. The outer magnets are not glued on. The inner ones are. And I've actually run this for about three hours and it didn't uh, fail. So I wouldn't exactly do an alternator for long-term use like this. This is a good experiment to get you familiar with making them. And so what I'm gonna do is take you out to the wood saw and show you how to make these. A hexagon has six sides to it. So you're trying to do a complete circle, which is 360 degrees. So you would need 60 degree angles, but you have it sharing an angle at each point. So that's 30 degrees. So you want to set your miter saw at 30 degrees. You want it to be one inch wide to fit that magnet. So you want this cut to be one inch. I've already done the 30 degree cut here. This piece of wood, if you use a one inch piece of wood because of the angle, you end up too long over here. So this needs to be 15 sixteenths, just a little bit less than an inch. It's actually right between that and seven eighths. Then you make your one inch cut. I've marked this on here where the one inch cut is. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. You've got your first one done and if you notice they should match up perfectly here. And they do. Now you flip this so you cut another one. You make your cuts and you should have two identical pieces, which we do. We've got two of the same right there. And when you put these two together like this, you now have the hexagon for the shape. So we're going to glue this together. That's the wood glue that I like to use. And I've uh, resorted to putting my glue in a water bottle with a little hole on top. It works really good if you uh, need a lot of access to glue. These don't clog up and you can actually smear it on there pretty good. So you put them together, get them lined up. You're going to have a little glue sticking over and you take a powerful clamp. You know, make sure your fingers aren't in there in case this slips and jams shut on you, which can happen. But you clamp them together, make sure that they're lined up. And then you let this sit for about two hours or three hours. And this will become, that seam will actually be stronger than the wood. You want to use wood that has a, a, a fine grain on it. It doesn't have big knots and everything. That way it doesn't split apart on you. And what you end up with is something that looks like this. Now, in order to find the perfect center, you take a ruler and put it across there and you draw a line with an X-Acto knife. You just carve a little bit into the wood uh, back and forth across all six and you get a perfect center and then you can drill a 3 8 inch or a little bit less than 3 8 inch hole in there and hammer your 3 8 inch shaft in there. This actually has glue in there too and it holds pretty well. You can actually drill down in through here and put a small pin if you want to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. Again, I do have uh, these, which is what I showed you in the first part of the video. The bearings on these are not the best. They're good, but they're not great. They 
build up some friction because they are not ball bearings, they're just regular slip bearings. So what I've done is size this down to a quarter inch shaft with a bearing on there. I used a Fresnel lens to heat the steel up and it slipped on so it's put on there with heat. I'm going to show you that in a future video. For now we are just going to be going, getting you to this point and uh, I did some tests earlier with this, came out pretty good. And this system can actually power a 65 watt light bulb with The nice thing about this setup is you can actually run one motor with the induction rotor. This one has the uh, magnetic setup. You can actually run one off of the other. In a future video, I'm going to be showing you how I did this. This is a single piece of 2x6. I'm going to be using this technique to make barrels. And also, I'm going to be showing you how to use wheels like this with a wheelbarrow axle. These actually would go inside of a piece of 6 inch PVC like this. They actually fit almost perfect. And instead of using these, if you have a more powerful alternator that you want to make, you can use the PVC. It's going to give you the waterproofing. And you can take these and you can offset them to make a two or three phase alternator by offsetting them like this. These would fit down in there and you would use the bearings on this and three, two or three of these rotors. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.